Anime can be about anything, but because all anime shows share a similar style, they tend to share the same distorted physical and biological laws. For example, women in anime can all access a dimension filled with nothing but hammers, and characters can summon all the sweat in their body to just a single pore. Another trope is the anime nosebleed. Some anime nosebleeds are so strong, they can rocket characters off like they're taking off into the stratosphere. Yep, we're gonna be talking about blood rockets today. The anime nosebleed is a common shorthand signifier for arousal, and you'll typically see it happen to men after seeing a woman in some compromised position. Now I'm only tackling this salacious trope because this is something that we can science. Sometimes an anime nosebleed is so strong that the character is propelled skyward or at least knocked backwards by the sheer force of dual blood nose jets. How hard would a nose have to shoot blood to do that? First, we need to know how much blood thrust, hashtag blood thrust, we need. To lift something off the ground, you need to provide an opposing force that fights gravity at least as much as that object's weight. So, for example, here is Sanji from One Piece. He frequently blood rockets, and I'll assume that he weighs an average person's weight, or 62 kilograms, which when you multiply by the force of gravity, the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth, you get 620 newtons. Now we're getting somewhere. If we want a character like Sanji to lift off like a rocket, then he needs to accelerate like a rocket. NASA astronauts used to pull three Gs, or 30 meters per second per second when they lifted off, so Sanji will too. So if we plug that acceleration in with Sanji's mass, we get a force that we need to accelerate him like a space shuttle, or 1,860 newtons. But we still have to account for Sanji's weight, 620 newtons, so the total lifting force that we need is 2,480 newtons. Oh! 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 Sick! Man, what the f- why'd you- now that we have our blood thrust, we can calculate the blood velocity, or how fast blood has to rocket out of someone's nose to launch them back with just a nosebleed. Generally speaking, thrust is equal to mass flow rate times velocity. Rockets use thousands of kilograms of exhaust coming out the back of them at thousands of meters per second to get major thrust. We have, we have nose blood. Now it's time to do the math. Oh, must be a bad sub. Now we have to decide how much blood will leave a character's nose and over what time. You can lose one pint of blood and still be okay, so let's start with that and over five seconds because that's what I clock Sanji doing in One Piece. If we plug our assumptions into the blood thrust equation and divide by two, we find that each nostril would have to fire blood out at over 13 kilometers per second, which means blood would be leaving a character's nose fast enough to escape the gravitational pull of the Earth. This is awesome, but it doesn't quite work. It doesn't work because this is close to the speed of sound in water. When you try to force a fluid like blood through a constriction, it tends to bunch up, so to speak, at that constriction and approaches the speed of sound in that fluid and won't go beyond it. For blood, which has a similar density to water, that bunching up speed that it won't go beyond is around 1,500 meters per second, or way lower than what we just calculated we need. Ow. God, stop, we stop it, that's gross. And in practice, we can't accelerate liquids to near their speeds of sound because of something called cavitation. Cavitation means little bubbles forming inside of a pipe or another moving fluid, and that happens because the water or fluid is moving so fast, the pressure changes the boiling point such that the water or fluid starts boiling inside of the pipes. And when these tiny boil bubbles implode, they force tiny jets of water against the sides of whatever they're flowing within, and it damages them a lot. Do you want that, do you want that happening in your face? In terms of the amount of blood, an anime nosebleed that's survivable would probably rupture all the tubing in your face thanks to cavitation, and the shock waves would jiggle your brain to death, kind of like being punched by mantis shrimp inside of your face. So we, so we need more fuel. No, no, ah! Oh, no! If an anime nosebleed rocket used all the blood inside your body, you have about five liters, then each nostril would only have to shoot out at 1,545 meters per second. Less, but that's still firmly within the boiling blood bubble in your face range, and we don't 
want. No, no! Oh, not the shrimpest! So the normal amount of blood in a human will not work. We need more fuel. Thankfully, anime characters seem to share another weird aspect of biology. They have way too much blood in their bodies. That's why when they get sliced, ah, blood sprays out everywhere for a long time. Okay, that's enough. So maybe if an anime character had twice as much blood in their bodies, say 10 liters, and it came out of their nose over the same amount of time, five seconds, then each nostril would only have to spray blood at 585 meters per second. Around 600 meters per second is well below the velocity for choked flow, and while cavitation might still be an issue, wait, stop it, stop it. It won't be nearly as much of an issue. So, working within anime biology, there is a velocity at which blood coming out of your nose can turn you into a rocket. When blood is rocketing out of a character's nose at Mach 2, or fighter jet speed. Ow! Oh, ew. So, how strong is an anime nosebleed? Well, to rocket away on blood that isn't boiling in your face and punching the inside of your face like mantis shrimpies, blood would have to be leaving your nose at Mach 2. You would also need a nearly indestructible face and some way to generate immense pressures inside your body to force blood out that quickly. At least it is not the craziest thing you've ever seen in an anime. Because science. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile where you can suggest ideas for future episodes. I get them all the time. And on Instagram under the same handle where I'm now posting mini episodes like the one I did today. Thanks. Thank you to Qualcomm for sponsoring today's show. Want to fly out to LA and catch the Power Rangers movie premiere? Well, thanks to Qualcomm and Lionsgate, you can. To celebrate the pretty cool new VR experience based on the film, we're partnering to send three lucky winners to the LA premiere on March 22nd. Each winner will also receive a Google Pixel phone and Daydream headset. Check out the link in the description to learn more and to enter to win. The funny thing is that if you allow for nose jets that come out of your body fast enough to launch you off of the ground, they're also coming out in very, very thin streams. Just for the mass flow rate to come out of your nostrils, they have to be in very, very thin streams, kind of like a water jet. And at the velocity that blood is coming out, because it's like water, it would have a lot of cutting pressure. And if you got uh, aroused, say, by a lovely member of either sex, and you got <laughs> and you got an anime-style nosebleed and your head rocketed backwards, those tiny streams might go out and cut that person in half. Ah, uh, love. <laughs> <laughs>